Aloha everybody, this is Tiggy Maximus with Tiggy Maximus Talks, episode 130 on YouTube. Thank you guys for listening to all these episodes and I appreciate all your support. Um, if you haven't already, there's a link on the Spotify episode, Tiggy Maximus Talks, where you can make a small donation towards the podcast. Also, remember to follow, subscribe, like the episodes, um, also tell your friends, so, uh, get the word out, so, thank you guys, um, I want to get on here quickly, because I went to two comedy shows the last couple of days, I want to talk about them, I had the privilege of going to the Humphreys, uh, backstage live, that was at the close to Humphreys by the Bay. That was a fun venue. And they have a really cool, uh, I guess you could say, security guard slash ticket taker by the name of Norm. Kudos to Norm, cool guy. Um, I got some people together to watch Tom Rhodes. Uh, he was the headliner of the show at the Backstage Live of Humphreys, and great show. Um, it was hosted by Randy Rellarba, so great guy, uh, put on a great show, you got Tom Rhodes on there, um, show, uh, I was sitting in section 163. That was pretty awesome, and a good view of the stage, plus the chairs do swivel, so if you need to turn to the side and look at the stage, it's almost ever, effortlessly uh, done, so, and it's a nice uh, overall view. Um, so, Randy Barlarba came up first. <coughs> hmm. And um, uh, can tell he's super excited, and this is going by the name of, I guess he said it was Screwball Comedy, but I guess it's now called Thank You Very Little Comedy, so I guess there's been a change, I guess you got to go with it, so he explained it, um, and uh, honestly, Randy got some interesting jokes. He does like to mix some uh, dark comedy um, in his sets. So, but he got the crowd to react almost uh, to everything. A lot were pretty deep and very kind of disturbing, but that's his style. So he is getting reactions from everybody. So, uh, great set. I would say he was a I was saying 8.4 out of 10 for his comedy. <clears throat> um, I believe the first person he brought up was um, uh, Shara Rampton. Uh, seen her quite a bit. Mm-hmm. See her host at the uh, comedy store. Mm-hmm. Seen her do stuff at the Madhouse. She's everywhere getting her, her mic time in. But she can be really intense, as usual. So not much has changed. Uh, so it talks about, you know, babysitting um, a girl, and talks about the obstacle course bit. You know, um, talks about you know, and yourself, you're pregnant in Kentucky. The chef. Um, is probably the dad. Um, so, a lot of things in that bit. Um, but it did get the crowd laughing because how thorough that bit was. So, um, she might have talked about family, but then she talked about other stuff too. So, but. 
I think she even called out a guy at the bar who was on his phone. And then he finally the finally realized that he was being called out. So uh, that got with that that was kind of funny actually. It kind of stopped um, her set just a little bit just to acknowledge to see that there is a guy at the, at the bar with on his phone with his back turned to the stage. So can't help it. You can't help it but be observative. Um, so. Um, Shar, I would say she was an 8 out of 10 uh, with the crowd and stuff, but she has some of her fun spots. Next, I believe we have um, uh, Matt E. Matt Eisendarth, I believe it is. Uh, I ran into him when he came in, talked to him for a little bit, and then he went up. And he has some interesting bits, some interesting jokes, but uh, um, it didn't catch on too much with the crowd, and he sometimes had to apologize for, because he can't, he knew that it wasn't hidden very well, and then he talked about this one bit, and he went to some sort of um, tram. Uh, trance and talked about, you know, uh, something about the mom and dad of his enemy and then forcing his enemy to watch mom and dad um, have sex or something. Um, so I was like, all right, he's in that trance and he's talking about that stuff and, um, I laughed a little bit, but I don't think the rest of the crowd was behind it too much. Even though we told everybody in the crowd that it's going to get dark. So, uh, Matt, I think he was about a 6.8. A 6.8 out of 10. Um, then we have Dallas Mc, McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin. Um, I got to meet him before the show started. Guy was pretty cool. I was telling him about my situation with the ticket thing. And my friend was going to come late. Sarah. And I didn't have her number. I didn't think I had her number. But she had mine. But the thing is the ticket can't be screenshot. So I'm thinking that somebody will have to ch double check the ticket which I have both and I didn't give it to Sarah and she didn't respond while driving to get there so kind of conundrum but I told Norm the security guy you know this is the person who's going to come take the ticket the here's on two tickets here's mine and here's the other and he was pretty cool about it and he said he would recognize Sarah if she called if she walked in asked to get in so it all worked out um, Dallas <laughs> had a lot of funny bits throughout the set, and, um, he had this bit that, that I remembered where he was talking about Karen's and then doing the hands on hips with the disappointed face. Um, and he kind of acted out some of his jokes, so a lot of funny stuff. I would say Dallas is an 8.5 out of 10. Um, and then you have your headliner, uh, Tom Rhodes. Um, that was pretty funny. Uh, talked about places they've traveled to, the best hotels, that places they've gone to, um, for some strange reason, from the way that he talks, it reminded me of Bray Wyatt. <laughs> um, so, and then, um, you got a good crowd reaction to everything he said. Um, there was one bit where he talked about something he inherited from his dad, uh, all these bobbleheads, because his dad was a big collector of bobbleheads, and that's how... Uh, it helps him remind him of his dad and then um, I guess 
uh, Tom had then said, well, having all those bobbleheads, I can now have a earthquake detection system now. And that got me laughing because I realized that is pretty true because those bobbleheads are very sensitive to movement. So um, overall, I got to talk to them a little bit after the show. And then my friend Sarah and Jackie wanted to talk to him. And apparently Sarah hit it off with Tom. <laughs> um, I guess we're good friends now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got uh, a vinyl record from Tom. That's pretty cool. I'll keep that at, keep that as a memento. Um, overall, I would say Tom was a nine out of ten for his comedy, and um, you know I wouldn't mind seeing him again on someone else's show, or if it's still seeing at the Humphreys by the Bay or uh, Humphreys backstage live. So I wouldn't mind. Really cool guy. Cool set. Liked it. Crowd loved it. So. Um, next, I went to a comedy show last night at Vid Bar in Point Loma. Um, it was hosted by Clint uh, Blackshear. And um, it was a very chill crowd. And um, Diego. Um, yeah, Diego Delado, <laughs> Delaga. Um, so, uh, Dylan was the, Diego was the host, and, you know, he did tell some jokes, and, um, crowd was very chill during his hosting and jokes and stuff, so, it was about a 6.9 out of 10. So, <laughs> um, and then he, <coughs> uh, Diego did bring up, um, I think it was Carlos Figueroa. Um, his set was all right, but didn't get a lot of reactions. So, and it was also pretty chill. Um, uh, I can't remember much from Carlos' set. He may have made one reference to um, uh, Hulk Hogan, I think. Um, but other than that, um, crowd didn't really get too much into it. Maybe one thing, but overall for his entire set I don't think he got a lot of laughter like um, like Diego or Matt so I would say Carlos was about a 7 out of 10 um, next person that went up was Morgan Linwall. Uh guy was pretty funny he talked about having a threesome Talked about the Eiffel Tower, talking about the Italian guy, that was the other guy. And then, um, yeah, um, and I guess he talked about terms for three ways. Um, but overall, um, he got the crowd laughing quite a bit at some parts. Um, so I would say Clint was about an 8.4 out of 10 for a set, so. Um, and then now we have your headliner. No, uh, Clint went up. <laughs> Clint went up before the headliner. Uh, so Clint went after Morgan. Clint talked about hair, his mom. Um, and it was kind of chill. And there was a bit of crowd work um, I would say Clint's um, uh, set was uh, an 8 um, I guess an 8.1 out of 10 um, no I was 7.9 yeah 7.9 out of 10 um, 
but I heard that this is the last time Clint was producing this show on a Wednesday night. And he's looking to put better talent somewhere else. Maybe same venue, but somewhere else. So, working out the kinks on that. Um, so yeah, Clint, uh, 7.9. Um, and then your headliner, Opie. Uh, Opie Yama something. Um, he goes by the name Opie Jokey. So, um, I think he talked about from being DC. And he talked about um, two like sex better, men or women. And he told us why women like it more than men. Um, and then uh, a lot of funny stuff. Oh man. And then it kind of slowed down, but then it, when he told another big joke that got a lot of laughs. So it was in between. So it was kind of building from one another. Uh, he even talked about um, how he would do things for his friend. Um, he mixed fantasy football with, um, you know, I guess uh, doing something gay for his friend. Um, so they yelled out, well, because I let you do this to me, you have to trade me Tyreek Hill. So I laugh because I'm out of the fantasy football and he mentioned that. So overall, I would say OP was a 8.9 out of 10 for a set. Strangely, I wanted to talk to Carlos. I wish I kind of did for like maybe a few seconds and then uh, Carlos and uh, <coughs> Um, I guess Morgan and Opie, but the only people I saw were Clint and Diego, and everybody else had left already, and hmm, I got a picture with Clint and Diego, but I couldn't get a picture with Opie or Morgan or Carlos, because it turns out, um, so yeah, Opie was nine, uh, 8.9 out of 10. Um, but yeah, Opie, Carlos, and Morgan, they all left together as a trio to go to another show together because they were performing at the Boom Boom Room, the Candy Boom Boom Room, which is every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock, and um, it's, it's just funny how the three of them were at the Good Bar together performing, and then they went left together as a trio, and they performed for Josh Nelson, Josh Josh Nelson so Josh Nelson's show um the candy boom boom room um so it was kind of kind of funny in the sense three went to one show and performed together and then they went travel together to another show together and then all three of them performed at that show too so it's interesting um, so overall, a couple good shows. I'm going to a show tonight at normal nights at the Adams Avenue Theater. It's that time of the month again, and Alex Petit will be hosting. So I wonder who's on the show. And I uh, can't wait to talk about it next time with you guys. Uh, next time, I'll probably talk about food and what's going on in sports. You know, the tremendous winning streak the Padres are on right now, but... Might be a slightly little too late, but right now there's 75 and 78. So nine games left, and they're down by four and a half games. So we'll see if the Padres can catch up to the Cubs, the Reds, or the Marlins. So I'm pretty sure the Diamondbacks and the Phillies have locked up two of the three wall card spots, but the last spot, the Padres are only behind by four wins with nine games to go. So Cross my fingers. Anywho, um, this is Tiki Maximus um, signing off. And the saying goes, boom, Tiki Maximus, baby. Signing off. Right, there we go. Bye.